uh, the session today is uh, Rosalba Garcia Mallan from University of Cambridge, and she's going to talk about entropy production in non reciprocal uh, of non reciprocal interactions. So, thank you. Um, let me let me check if this. No, I think I need to go ahead. I have a yes too. Oh, okay. On this side, you can plug this into the and then maybe that. Oh, um, I think it's okay. Yeah, never mind. No, no, it, it, I think it was. It was the same for me, and then it was never this. Okay, if not, you can. Do yeah, I'm just going to start. Um, well, okay, so uh, thank you so much to the organizers for this wonderful conference, and also thank you for uh, giving me the chance to present my work. Um, I'm going to talk about entropy production of non-reciprocal interactions. Um, and this is joint work with Zillo, John, and Gunnar Prusna. So first of all, um, well, there are many types of non-reciprocal interactions. And sometimes they can be used to model certain type of phenomena. So here, there's an example of a bird in a flock. And sometimes we can model this phenomena by letting the birds aligning their velocity with their neighbors. Um, so, um, okay. Um, but these birds are not able to see all their neighbors. In fact, they have a vision cone. And so these interactions have a directionality. Uh, one bird will try to align with the bird in front of them, but not the other way around. And so another example is this one represented by three particles. Uh, each of these three particles are subject to a harmonic potential. And on top of that, they may interact with one another. So in this drawing, for example, the green particle is coupled to both purple and orange but the orange particle is not coupled to any other particle. And in that sense, uh, these type of interactions are non-reciprocal. Um, so this system is gen well, was generalized in the paper by Lausanne Clapp. And the, one of the conclusions is that non-reciprocal interactions are <coughs> out of equilibrium in general, except for some particular choice of the parameters. So in the system I'm going to show, um, there is a type, uh, there's a similar type of uh, condition for detailed balance. So this is the outline of my talk. I'm going to present the model of dog and sheep. Uh, then I'm going to talk about the two-point correlation function and the entropy production. So um, the main motivation is to understand how non-reciprocal interactions are related to time irreversibility, and, and also, also another very uh, strong motivation for us is to understand how to um, implement pairwise interactions in a microscopic theory. So we derive a field theory that is able to retain these microscopic interactions. Okay, so this is the model of dog and sheep. Um, we consider two species of particles. Uh, one is dog, the other one is sheep. Um, particles uh, are subject to diffusion and uh, self-propulsion. And to simplify things, we, we can think that they don't have any self-propulsion. So essentially, they can be passive particles just diffusing around. Now, um, on top of that, they may interact uh, by uh, pairwise potential. So um, a particle that is in one species will interact with particles from another species, um, and they will do so by these pairwise interactions. Um, the non-reciprocity comes about when these pair potentials are different. So for example, uh, the dog may be attracted to the sheep, and the sheep may be repelled by the dog, and so one is chasing the other one. Okay, so here's a simulation. So 
Here we've got uh, these black dots represent sheep and the red cross represents the dog. And so this uh, dog is running towards wherever this sheep accumulate. Um, and this sheep run away from the dog and as a result, there are these uh, corridors or channels of empty space. And this is another example. So here, the particles have a very small diffusion constant. Uh, so they are quite localized. Um, and anything that's happening in this system is because of these non-reciprocal interactions between this dog and the sheep. I recommend to watch some videos. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is the mathematical description of the system. Uh, we have this system of coupled uh, overdone Langevin equations. And so X is the position of the dog and Y are the position of each sheep. Um, each of them have a self-propulsion indicated by U. Uh, then there's the uh, diffusion constant, D, and uh, these pairwise interactions mediated by the potentials. So you can see that the dog is interacting with all of them, with, sorry, with all the sheep, um, because it's, it has this sum, uh, so it can interact with each of them, and then the sheep only interact one-to-one -one with the dog. And equivalently, um, this is, we can write the Fokker-Planck equation. Uh, so you can see that these in, the uh, interactions enter in the shift, in the drift of these particles. And the reason why I show this Fokker-Planck equation is because uh, this is what we need in order to derive the doipelity field theory. So um, because we have two species of particles, then we have two types of fields. One is phi for the dog, and one is psi for the sheep. And within each of these fields, there is an annihilation field, for example, phi, and a doi shifted creation field, which is phi tilde. So I don't have time to go into the details of how to derive this, but you can see that uh, from the Fokker-Planck equation, um, we can use that to write this action functional so that the uh, part um, governing the free motion of the particles is in the uh, A0, so the Gaussian model, and then anything else is in the perturbation part of the action. So, yeah, without the perturbation, there is no interactions, and, uh, yeah, interactions are modeled with this extra perturbation part. So, that also gives us the bare propagators, um, in this case, the phi or dog is indicated by this blue line, and the wrigley pink indicates the field for sheep. So at the top, you can see the uh, bare propagators governing free uh, motion, and at the bottom, we have the two interaction vertices that we are going to use. There are more, but we are not going to use them, so. I don't show them. Ah, and then there's also this dashed line which indicates the uh, potential. So the potential acts on one, of, on one field due to the presence of the other field. So the first thing we wanted to calculate was the two-point correlation function. Um, Before you go to, to, to the structure, but power counting, what do you understand out of this? So some part of interaction will be relevant, some other will be irrelevant. Do you have any idea? Um, in everything is, well, actually, I didn't look into this okay. particularly, okay. but we are not going to do any renormalization groups, so. Okay. <laughs> I think it's a nightmare, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so at this moment, we, we didn't wonder about this. Okay, so the two-point correlation function. Um, so in this system, there is one dog and one sheep, 
Later on, I will talk about more particles, but for now, there's only these two particles. Um, so the system is initialized with some, yeah, with some, well, yeah, at x naught and y naught. And at a, let, at a later time, we want to know what's the probability that the dog is at x and the ship is at y. And so that's uh, the perturbative way of describing this observable. Well, we, what we found that is not very surprising. So this two-point correlation function at stationarity it can be mapped to the distribution of a particle uh, in an external potential on a ring. So um, that's not super surprising. And in fact, if you, ca if you don't give any, so if the self propulsions of the particles are zero, uh, the, this two-point correlation function is a Boltzmann type of distribution. So to visualize um, these results, um, we ran some simulations and we chose this type of uh, potential. So both particles have obeyed the same potential, but we may choose a different amplitude. So in this case, uh, a is the amplitude, and if A is positive, this potential is repulsive, and if A is negative, the potential is attractive. So, so here's an example where both particles have a repulsive potential, and what happens is that they tend to stay away from each other as, as much as possible. Um, when both potentials are attractive, uh, they tend to stay close together. There are also fluctuations, so sometimes they also get a bit separate. And maybe more interesting is the case where one particle is chasing the other one. Uh, so here, the red cross has an attractive potential, so it's attracted to the black dot, which has a repulsive potential. <laughs> and, uh, well, so not very surprising. Again, the simul if we calculate the two-point correlation function, uh, the simulations match the theory and, yeah. So what happens is that when both potentials are attractive, uh, particles tend to stay very close. We can see that uh, bump at the bottom. Or if they are both repulsive, they tend to be very far away. And if one is chasing the other one, essentially we have a uniform distribution of the distance between these two particles. So other observables that were interesting to look into um, are the mean square distance. So you can see, oh, here, at the bottom, there's the amplitude of the potential of the dog, and on the vertical axis, there's the amplitude of the potential of the ship. So you can see on the left bottom corner, it's uh, both attractive, on the opposite side is both repulsive, and then on the other ends is one attractive, one repulsive. Um, so the mean square distance uh, increases as the potentials get more and more repulsive, and also we observed, well, we calculated the velocity-velocity correlation. So even though we don't have alignment interactions, because of uh, how they interact, effectively there is a velocity correlations. Whenever these two particles are attractive or repulsive, um, their velocities tend to be anticorrelated. Whereas if one is chasing the other one, they tend to run in the same direction and their velocities are positively correlated. And we also calculated the entropy production. So here, everything is Markovian. There's nothing hidden. And so we can calculate the entropy production in closed form. Um, and what's most interesting is that we found this condition for detailed balance, um, which, uh, well, it's also consistent with numerics. And what it gives us is a uh, 
what it tells us that the case where one particle is chasing the other one um, is the farthest uh, scenario from equilibrium. Okay, so yeah, now very quickly, but um, we also want to know what happens if we have many particles. Um, and in this case, uh, we, well, having access to the analytical expressions is very hard, um, and that's something we are currently working on, uh, maybe in a perturbation, uh, yeah, in some perturbation expansion. Oh. So um, here, I just wanted to show that the two-point correlation function between one dog and one of the N sheep uh, gets more and more, um, uh, it accentuates the, the type of feature. So uh, here you can see that as we increase the number of sheep, if the two potentials are repulsive, then they tend to, tend to be even and even further apart. So calculating the entropy production uh, here is more difficult because we need not only the two-point correlation function, we also need the three-point correlation function, and we have n plus one particles. Um, so that's at the moment something we want to calculate, and we are working on this. Again, we obtain the same condition for detailed balance. Um, so the explanation is quite simple. If the system is a detailed balance, satisfying detailed balance, then introducing a new particle uh, that satisfies also this condition will uh, keep the system at equilibrium. And so finally, uh, maybe the, mo the take home mes message is that um, in general, this system is out of equilibrium because of these non-reciprocal interactions, uh, except in some particular conditions. And the farthest case from uh, equilibrium is the picture where one uh, particle is, oh, one, yeah, one particle is chasing the other ones. Um, and well, so this is an um, example where we can calculate things uh, maybe perturbatively but in close form and we would like to extend this system to maybe other types of motion more complicated like random tumble or active uh, Brownian particles, etc. And uh, thank you for listening. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for this very nice talk. Um, ah, very good. First question. Yeah, thank you a lot for this. So, um, a rather like a conceptual kind of a question, which is like, you know, um, I, I, I got really interested um, in when you said, I mean, the highest entropy production in, is seen in the chaser being chased like scenario, which is like very, yeah, intriguing. Um, did you have any chance to look at like, but yet like some biological settings where you could map actually this? chasing, you know, being chased scenario. And then, you know, there are some papers out there in like, that are done by some biophysicists and stochastic thermodynamics that show that high entropy production isn't always biologically super meaningful and so on and so forth. So how can your results be linked to these results? Did you have the chance to take a look at that? Um, so um, there are examples in biology where uh, there are these type of chasing uh, interactions. Um, I have read some paper about some cells that whenever they uh, come in, in, in contact, uh, then they tend to separate or they uh, slow down their motion or it's um, much more complex. Um, but yeah, it, and um, of course it's something that, uh, I mean, it's something I, w I want to know more. So, I mean, if, if people have more examples, that's something that, yeah, I want to, I would like to see. I will find you. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you very much for, oh, for your nice talk. Um, I was wondering in the case when you have many particles, uh, since, yeah, for example, this dog is interacting with all the background chip particles, right? So maybe quite problematic to treat that sum over the whole particle, uh, particle system. Uh, and you said that you're work, working on that. I was just curious on whether you have considered consider like doing some kind of hard refog, like related to the density peaks of ships, 
since those NCTPs are the ones that are attracting the, do the dog the most or something like that? Are you? Well, are you asking how we look into this and? Yeah, like uh, w which are your ideas to, to deal with this um, uh, many particle? Well, so um, the diagrammatics, so the first approach w was to look into the diagrammatics. Um, so this is only for two particles. When you have more sheep, then, so if this is the dog, then you start having, okay, this is the sheep, and then you start having another, another one, and so on, and yeah. so you, you have one dog and, and, and sheep, and the interactions are, well, yeah, so, yeah. you know, like, you can have any interactions, uh, and it's really hard to, yeah, keep track of. So um, we were puzzled about this for a long time. Um, we, we know about uh, how the system behaves uh, when it's at equilibrium, so maybe that's an interesting point to look at. Um, but yeah, this is still, we are well, working on this, so maybe we are wrong. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, like, I think it's super cool because reminding me to this classical picture that people does when you introduce superconductors and everyone that, um, has this picture of, no, you have the ions in the lattice and then the electron comes in when there's some kind of back and see, uh, and there's this chasing also and run away. So maybe with some kind of mean field, I don't know. But it, oh. I think it's super cool. Thank <laughs> you, like, um, I really like the talk, thank you. Thank you. I'm curious if you have looked at the case in which you have many dogs and one sheep, or many dogs and many <laughs> sheep. Um, no, but um, it's uh, there's, it's quite symmetrical. So maybe having many dogs and many sheep would, uh, yeah, would be interesting. Yeah, but if you have many dogs and one sheep, right? I mean, you say. Well, so actually, have because or, or because of this, I. We started looking at many videos about dog and sheep. <laughs> and uh, you can find some videos of sheep that start chasing the dog as well. <laughs> so, yeah. So we also have a question in the chat. Uh, do you encounter some phase transitions by varying the interactions? Um, no. So uh, what we found is that the, well, there are different phenomena, but the transition between these different regimes is very smooth and there's nothing sad on, no. Yeah, okay. okay. Benjamin, maybe the last question. Thanks for the talk. Uh, also, to, to uh, continue with this discussion of the many sheep, one dog, is there, is there a hydrodynamic limit that you can take? Because you have already these fields that, that, that are somehow a, a coarse grain description. Can you replace it by a sheep liquid? The Oh. In the limit of n going to infinity. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, would it simplify? Because of course, uh, you, you showed the plots for a hundred sheep, and I imagine the coronal marks being terrible. Uh, but if you take n to infinity, is there a sort of um, <laughs> so that's something that if I mean I would like to know because, uh, for example, we were wondering about having like an effective distribution, an effective n-particle correlation function. Uh, that's something, so I don't know about it. But, but yeah. in this case, if you have like a, a perfect symmetry of sheep around you, you will be, get stuck again, right? Because you will be equally attracted to all sides. So. Yeah, the uh, fluctuating sheep mm. liquid. Okay, and if you do that, can you please draw that for us in the next talk? <laughs> because I would like to see how this looks like. Uh, okay, I think on that note we should uh, go to the coffee break, uh, coffee break and uh, end the session. And thank you again, Rosalba, and all the speakers of this session for the <laughs> nice talk.